It's math time. Math time with Heinz. It's math time. Math time with Heinz. It's math time. Hi, everybody. Welcome to lesson one here of our unit on exponential functions. So we're going to review the properties of exponents that you learned back in eighth grade. So we're going to start this unit virtually by reviewing those properties of exponents you already learned because we're going to extend this idea of exponents to, uh, to functions that, we, that we're going to study this year. So rewrite the following expression by using exponents. Why do we have exponents is so we can clean up messes that look like this. So I have two, 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 two. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six twos being multiplied together. So that's why I have an exponent that that base of two is just called the base to the power of an exponent of six. That means I have six twos being multiplied together. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got seven threes being multiplied together. So times three to the seventh. And then finally, I've got five times five. So just five squared. So that's how I can simplify that crazy expression there by using exponents. This entire unit, you're gonna hear me say this over and over again. Exponents are all about repeated, repeated multiplication. Last unit, linear functions are all about repeated addition. Um, exponents are gonna be all about repeated multiplication. It'd be nice if I could spell repeated correctly, repeated multiplication. So let's talk about the properties that you learned. So consider the expression 5 squared times 5 to the third. So I have 5 squared times 5 cubed, you might also say, right? 5 to the second or 5 to the third is 5 squared or 5 cubed. I'm using those, those common exponents have special names. So if I want to combine these together, what do I get? Well, let's expand these out. Well, what does 5 squared actually mean? It really means I have 5 times 5. 5 to the third means I have 5 times 5 times 5. So I have a bunch of repeated multiplication here. How many 5s do I have in total? Well, I have 2 and 3 more, which gives me 5 to the fifth. So that a there equals 5. Well, what if I have 2 to the fourth and 2 to the third? Well, let's expand this out. 2, 2, 2, 2. That's 2 to the fourth. And then 2 to the third means I have 3 more of them. So how many twos do I have? I wrote it three times two. I know my numbers. Um, how many twos do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I had four and three more gives me two to the seventh. What about x squared and x to the sixth? So x squared, x to the sixth. One, two, three, four, five, six. So look what we have here. I have two of them. And then I have six more, so all together I have six, seven, eight, x to the eighth. So what property am I looking at here? What property am I looking at here? Well, two plus three gave me five. Four plus three gave me seven. Two plus six gave me eight. So if I have the same base and the both expressions have exponents, the product is x to the a plus b. To multiply, we add the exponents together. So when we when we find a product, when we find a product, we really just find the sum of the exponents. To find a product, a, x to the a times x to the b, we really do x to the a plus b. Notice it's not a b. That's that's implying you multiply them. We're adding these exponents here. All right, let's look at some more prop another property here. So this is the most important one. This is the most important one here. X to the A times X to the B, you add the exponents to find a product. So here I have something to the fourth. Well, that means I have four of those somethings. This would have been a prime opportunity for chicken nuggets here, but I have four of these five squareds being multiplied together. How many fives do I really have here? Well, one, two, if I expanded this out even more, five times five, five times five, five times, looks like 55. 
five times five. I really have five to the eighth. I have eight of them written there. So when I have an exponent, a power to a power, notice that you can always just stop and break it down. You can always just stop and, and say, all right, what does a to the fourth mean? Well, an exponent of four means I have four of those things being multiplied together. And then I have five squared, so then I have two of each of those. Write this in expanded form. So three to the fourth cubed. I'm cubing that chicken nugget there. So I have three of those being multiplied together. Well, how many of those do I have? Well, that gives me four, eight, 12. That gives me three to the 12th. Because when I find a product, I add the exponents. Four plus four plus four is 12. Three to the 12th. What if I have x to the fifth squared? So what am I doing? I'm squaring. Squaring means multiply it by itself. x to the fifth times x to the fifth. Well, how many x's do I have? I have five of them, and then another five of them gives me x to the tenth. So I have ten of them there. So in general, when we have a power to a power, what can I do? Squared to the fourth gave me to the eighth. Four to the third gave me to the twelfth. 5 to the second gave me 10. So x to the a to the b, a power to a power, you multiply the exponents. A power to a power means you multiply the exponents. Power to a power is you multiply. And this is another important property that we're going to use throughout this unit. And just good, good mathematics to know. So write 2 times 3 to the 4th in expanded form. 2 times 3 to the 4th in expanded form. All right, well, I have something to the 4th, so it's 2 times 3. And I have 4 of them. So using the commutative property and stuff here, I, how many 2s do I have? Well, that's 2 to the 4th and 3 to the 4th. So notice everybody in this set of parentheses got that exponent. Everyone in that set of parentheses got that exponent. Write this out, 5x to the 3rd. So 5 times 5 times 5 would be... 5 cubed, x times x times x is x cubed. So notice, again, everyone in that set of parentheses is getting that exponent. Let's see what we get here. x squared, y to the third. So I have 4. I have this thing raised to the fourth. So that means I have 4 of these guys. I have 4 of those guys. All right. How many x's do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. x to the eighth. Ha, huh, 2 times power to a power, 2 times 4 is 8, 1, 2, 1, 2 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, y to the 12th, which makes sense again because that's 3 to the 4th. So when I have multiple things in the parentheses raised to a power, everyone in that set of parentheses gets that power. Notice this only works with multiplication. If there's a plus sign there, you can't just drag that exponent in. It only works with multiplication because exponents are all about repeated multiplication. The minute you start throwing a plus sign in there, it's a whole different ball game. This property only works, and we're going to deal with this later in the year, this property only works when you have a product, a product to a power. I think we've got some practice now. All right, so let's try these practice problems. They may seem tricky at first, but you just got to remember, exponents are all about repeated multiplication. So here we go. We deal with the numbers first. 15 times 3, 45. x to the 10th, x to the... I don't see anything there, so I really have one of them. Well, I have 10 of them, and another one gives me 11 of them. y to the 2nd, y to the 3rd is y to the 5th. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's my final answer. So we just kind of multiply piece by piece together to clean up these expressions. So there's two ways you can do this one. You can say, all right, I've got something cubed. Let me write it out. What does it mean to cube? It means I have three of them. Three times three times three. 
27. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, x to the 6th. The other way you could have thought about this one is use that kind of not distributive property, but everyone gets that exponent. Everyone gets cubed, power to a power gets multiplied. So that's another way you could have done this one. I kind of like this first option because it, it, you don't have to memorize more things. You kind of just do it. You just kind of expand it out. 3 cubed, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Same thing here. Two different ways you can do it. I'd rather just write it out. It's squared. What does it mean to square something? Multiply it by itself. 8 times 8 is 64. x squared and x squared would give me x to the fourth. y, y, y to the sixth. All right, I have three of them and another three of them. 3 plus 3 is 6. The other way to do it would be to kind of give everyone that exponent. 8 squared. Squared. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. And yeah, it checks out. We get the same exact thing. And finally, we'll end with this one here. Oof. Notice this thing is being squared. So we should probably start with that. So that means I'm going to write it twice. I'm going to multiply it by itself. And then we can just combine all the terms together. Negative 5 and negative 5 make 25. Positive times 4 would give me 100. 25 times 4. 8 to the 3rd, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 to the 8th. I have a B, 1B, 2Bs, 3Bs. B to the 3rd. Remember, there's all little secret ones there. And then C can't combine with anybody, so he just comes along for the ride. Okay, so hopefully this was a good review of working with exponents. Um, we're going to practice this again. It's, it's not a huge idea, but I need you to understand exponents are all about repeated multiplication. And I'll see you guys in the next video.